Hey everyone, it's Monica. Welcome back to Homeschool Voices. Today's video is all about charter schools and why I actually wouldn't be sad if we didn't have them next year. Welcome to my studio, my lovely car, because of course I'm in a car. <laughs> so this week's video is all about charter schools because if you've been watching my videos, you know it's on my mind. We signed up with a charter school in January, I believe. It is the end of February. It feels like we've had a whole year, but it's only been two months. It's been very nice. It's been very easy, actually. All I have to do is go in once a month. I have to meet with this lady. I show her four samples, one for each subject area. Um, it's been very easy. So I do know that we have state testing coming up, and I, I don't know that my educational facilitator, or EF as they like to call themselves, has talked to me about it and to tell you the truth I don't even know if I'm going to be in town um, I, th I have to admit I have let this get to me a little bit this this standardized testing because like most people I don't like it I don't see the point I don't think it benefits kids and I don't really think it's in their best interest so to me it's kind of a problem and as it is coming up I'm thinking about it and I've started asking questions and I get similar answers but there's some variety um, but the picture that I am starting to get is that for my youngest is a third grader for a third grader they are expected to do two different days each day is going to be four to six hours of testing that's insane if you don't think it's insane, you're just justifying this because that's just the definition of insanity. And not only that, and oh, so it's two days. So that's a total of eight to 12 hours, right? So they're only testing math and language arts. So this just goes to show who devised this test? Who decided that it's in the children's best interest? How is that in, in a child's best interest? to take that test. Really, the teachers can't assess the kids, the teachers can't test at the end of the week and the end of the semester and get an idea of where the kids are at. We really need to do this. It's kind of crazy if you think about it. Not only do the kids have to be tested for 8 to 12 hours split over two days, the third graders also have to write a written response and it has to be typed. Now, my daughter has been learning how to type, not because I value it at nine years old and I wanted to, but because she has begged me over and over and over to learn to type and I just say okay because I figure if she's excited about it, might as well, but I would never have pushed it at nine years old if she wasn't excited. So these kids have to write a written response, so I don't know how good she is at typing and I'm only just getting her excited about writing. I'm trying to imagine my nine-year-old sitting, we'll say a minimum, she, maybe she does it for less time, for four hours, and then maybe at the end, I don't know when this, this long writing prompt is, <laughs> just to type an answer. Um, and again, it's all a big mystery. I don't know, is it just supposed to be three sentences? Is it supposed to be a, a page of writing? I have no idea, because apparently, it's not important to tell parents what is expected of, of them and their children. Um, I guess you're just expected to show up. I have no idea what the date is. Um, I will ask my EF when I meet with her next week. But as of now, I don't know what the date is. I looked online on the website. It doesn't tell you what date they do these tests. I, I, I don't even know if I'm in town. And you know, remember, I'm a homeschooler. I don't care what your public school schedule is. I can only go visit family. There's, there is a very small window during the year in which I can uh, make a trip out to visit family and we could do a family vacation and it's it's kind of non-negotiable so I don't honestly I don't even know if it's gonna be an issue because I don't know if I will be in town but if I was I'm leaning toward especially with my nine-year-old towards not taking it so when you say I want to opt out of the state testing and you voice this opinion you would be surprised that you get a lot of pushback 
in the homeschool charter community in California. The reason being is because people will say if you opt out and too many people opt out, then the school could get closed. They say the school has to have a certain amount of participation. If they do not have that participation, then they can be closed. Now, that's actually really hard for me to believe because we have a legal right in California to opt out of state testing. But if too many of us exercise our legal right, a school will get closed? It's hard to believe, but it's not hard to believe because I'm in California and California is crazy. So that's where it stands right now. In theory, the school could get closed. And I found that concerning because I'm liking the funds. It's not the school in particular, but the funds. And it's an amazing thing. And I've looked into it and other states just don't really have this. Hawaii and Alaska have something sort of similar, but no other state gives out $2,500 to $3,000 a year per child for music lessons and um, you know, lessons at the local learning center. My son's taking chemistry there. My daughter's taking an art class. It's a lot of um, fun. It's actually been a good thing. We were liking it. But you know what? I decided that I am not going to let someone dangle a little carrot of money in front of my face and let that dictate what I do. I told myself when I went into this, I am not going to let the charter school dictate how I educate my kids. And it's really tempting when someone dangles $3,000 in front of your face for you to make adjustments. Now, there's nothing wrong with making small adjustments, but here's the thing. Every parent, not just homeschool parents, but especially if you're homeschooling, you need to make a long-term list of goals. I want my kid to have this skill, to know, have this knowledge set and that knowledge set by the time I'm done with them. So you actually have goals and then work backward year by year so you know what you're gonna work on this year. So I know what I need to work on and what my goals are for my children this year. So I, that tells me what I have to work on this week, right? And my kids need exercise. My kids need to socialize with other children. They need to. And they need some time to rest and, and relax. They actually need that. <laughs> so after all of that, if I want to maybe do something for the charter school, something extra that is honestly a little unreasonable, then I'll consider it. But I'm not going to put my kid in harm's way. That's the other thing. I personally, I've been told that I'm a little overprotective, but I just call it protecting my children. I'm supposed to take my kid to a location neither my child nor myself is familiar with um, around a bunch of kids that we don't know, my kids don't know, I don't know, and the proctor is a person that I don't know, nor does my, neither of my children know this person either. And they're supposed to stay there four to six hours one day, four to six hours another day, I, I can kind of see it with my 12 year old, but my nine year old, and then just add into the fact that it's four to six hours of testing. That's crazy. Did I mention that's crazy? So we have the situation, the charter school could close and I have decided that I'm going to just be at peace with whatever happens. I am going to make decisions in the best interest of my children and I'm not going to let that sort of temptation. It's temptation for money. That's what it is. I want my money. It's not, I don't want the charter school to close this. I want my money. <laughs> so I'll basically do anything that they ask of me. It, it just makes me wonder after a while, how much will you do for that money? At what point will you say no when they tell you, oh, but the charter school will close. Oh, but they have to have participation. At what point will you say no? So this brings me to the end, <laughs> but probably the most important thought, which is as a parent, whether you homeschool or not, but especially to homeschoolers, you need to stand firm in what you know is right for your children. And 
That's not a little thing. That's a big deal. You decide what your kids need to learn and what they need, skills they need to have, and you stick by that. And you figure out, hey, work back and know what they need to do this year. And if you have time for other stuff, after they've socialized and exercised and rested, if you have time for other stuff, you can consider it. But what scares me is I think a lot of parents haven't done that work. They don't they don't really have an end goal. They're just sort of day tripping and they're still actually doing a good job, but there's not the clarity there. So when that charter school comes in and says, hey, we want you to do this thing, your kid has to be able to type a written response at nine years old and you say, oh, I, I have to teach them to type. They don't know how to type. Well, do you actually have time to do that? Do you know, have you, have you set long-term goals? Do you know what you actually really need to accomplish, accomplish this year in order to accomplish those long-term goals? So what I suspect is that people actually don't know and that they are starting to teach to the test, which is a terrifying thought to me in homeschool. That is not what homeschooling is about. That it just takes away a lot of what is so beautiful. For example, we just went to the library today. My kids have spent so much time reading. My son is preparing for his speech. The books that my daughter are reading are giving her a sense of excitement about history. There are these little magic uh, treehouse books and, and they talk about historical concepts and they get you excited about it. My son is, is practicing a speech about castles but that public speaking, the research skills, the writing, he has to write the speech, but this stuff is not very measurable. But I have decided that it's important and I want my kids to spend time on that. And, and all the other stuff that they got at the library, all the good books that we have, like you, you may know if you've watched my videos, we're going to Italy. My kids are spending a lot of time learning about Rome and Naples and Italy, but that's not being measured. And it's just, I'm not going to teach to a test and I hope you guys don't either. I hope whatever you do, if you go down this charter school route and you take that money, don't let people constantly dangle it in front of your face and say, ah, 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 if you don't do this, you can't have the money. When they say the school will close, that's what they mean, right? Oh, you can't have the money if you don't do this. And oh, you can't have the money if you don't do that. Don't let that happen. Stand firm in what you know is right for your children and then make everything else work around it. If you can get that money and you can use it for your kids, then do it. And you know what? If it doesn't work out, you know what I would do? If there were no charter schools next year because they are attacking the heck out of charter schools and maybe too many people exercise their their rights to opt out of tests and then all the schools closed, I would start a local co-op. That's what I would do. I would start the most amazing co-op in Santa Clarita. There would be free classes, they would be taught by parents, kind of like AYSO if you have that. No, we have that here. It's, it's all volunteer and that's what that's what I would start. But to tell you the truth, I'm too comfortable to mess with that right now. I'm getting $2,800 a year for each kid. I'm comfortable. I don't want to. There's classes that are essentially free to me because I use my funds on those classes. But if I wasn't so comfortable, if the charter schools closed, I would definitely definitely start a co-op with free classes or at the most we would charge for materials so maybe maybe five dollars per class who knows I don't know what kind of class would require that but it would be free or next to free and not only that it would really start to bring together the homeschool community in my town in a way that it, it is not brought together right now and it kind of makes me sad because we need to bring our homeschool community together. And I think a lot of us get afraid when we have something good and we're comfortable, we get afraid of that going away and, and we're not open to possibilities. We're not open to the possibility that something better could be around the corner. So what I just wanna tell you, you parents, is fight against it, write your legislators, there's some new law that they're proposing that at, they're, they're gonna approve vendors at the state level and it's an attack, fight it. You know, don't exhaust yourself. Don't be negative. Don't worry though. If it happens, it's going to be okay. And you know what? It might be better. You never know. 
I want to know what your thoughts are on all of this. Please tell me in the comments below what you think about charter schools and, and all the attacks and, and the standardized tests and the funding and the temptation to maybe compromise a little too much sometimes. Um, if you like this video, please click thumbs up. If um, you want to see more videos like this, please click the subscribe button and the notification bell next to it. In the meantime, happy homeschooling and have a great day.